So many of us aspire to be more powerful, more alive, and more free. And if you're listening to this show, then I know that you are keen to amp up the passion in your life and to utilize more of your potential. Am I right? Well, I'm happy to share with you that today's interview is going to shine a light on the magical process for taking your growth and development to the next level. Today, I'm speaking with Helen Ribello, the peaceful pathfinder. Helen helps soulful women to find more meaning and purpose in their life by unlocking the courage to live and work on their terms using her unique magical process. Helen believes that we all deserve to shine and that we are absolute miracles of creation and that we all have something unique to contribute. Today, we aim to help you get to the roots of overwhelm and discontent, which stem from an underlying inherited belief that we're not quite good enough and that in order to have worth, we must be constantly doing and striving rather than do the things we actually want to do. Helen is excited to share the release of her crowdfunding campaign for her new book, The Magical Unfolding. So I hope that you will enjoy this conversation where we each explore the magical process that helped us both break free from conformity, people pleasing, and to create healthy boundaries to live authentically. Welcome to Liberate Your Authentic Self with Dr. Andrea Pennington. The prescription for living your life out loud. The lovely Helen Ribello, thank you so much for being here with me. Thank you for having me. It's what a delight. What an absolute privilege as well. Thank you. It is. It's a privilege to connect with you. I'm so excited that we got connected earlier this year and and that yeah, I'm gonna see you in London pretty soon. And I'm so excited about this launch of this campaign to bring your book to the world. Hey, y'all, I got a little sneak preview of what this book is all about. And it's truly, truly, truly in line with everything that I believe in. And I really believe this is going to help people. So, well, let's just get into it. I think one of the first things before we even get into the magical unfolding, I love that you describe yourself as an NHS escapee. <laughs> Um, and for people here in America or there in America who don't know, NHS is the national health system in the United Kingdom. So mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about your escape from traditional health care and how you've really turned your life around. Yeah, sure. So um, a bit like you, I followed, followed my head, followed the shoulds, yeah. and um, having left home at 18 and forged my own path and gone from being, you know, penniless, working my way through life. I got to, um, I got to 25 and a friend of mine sadly died. And, um, I don't think you know this, but I, I literally heard a voice saying, would you feel cheated if you died tomorrow? Oh, I just got chills. Yeah. Like well, as I'm saying it. Wow. I can, you know, I can really connect into that energy. And um, that's the first time I heard a kind of, you know, an inner calling or an external calling. I wasn't sure which, but I knew I had to, I had to honor it and I had to do something. But what I wanted to do was, was a degree related to writing and English because mm. it's my natural, that's my natural flow. That's what I'm interested in. I ended up following my head thinking I need a vocational degree. I need to make my parents proud because I've really let them down. And, and off I went, trained in radiography, <laughs> knew halfway through my three-year training I hated it, uh, but carried on, thought I'll get my BSc ons. And, um, and then, I yeah, I just, I just stayed in the NHS and um, I, hated the, I hated the structure. I hated having to behave myself, have my hair a certain way. <laughs> I hated being told off for talking for, to people too much. Like I really wanted to help people, but I was always being told off for spending too much time with people. Wow. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, I got to the stage like a lot of us do. I'd specialized in ultrasound and I was uh, dealing with, with all the stuff that goes around with obstetrics and gynae and um, 
it was slowly killing me. It was slowly destroying my soul because my heart just wasn't in it. I couldn't spend time with people. And, um, and I got to the point where I was spending my Sundays dreading Monday morning and I got very, very depressed. And, um, I, yeah, you know, you just have one of those crux points. Yeah. And, you know, another little wake up call moment where I just thought, right, I have to change this. So, yeah, I approached it actually very logically. I thought, what am I good at? What do, what are my natural skills? What am I inherently drawn towards? And how can I utilize all the, uh, the knowledge I already have and, sh- and shift? And somehow I magically found Shiatsu and uh, <laughs> I didn't even know it existed. And, and I thought, yeah, I'll just do that for a little while until I get pregnant. That will work along with having a child. And, um, and slowly but surely I got dragged into this world where I was opened up to how interconnected our bodies and our minds are and how, how the world of energy works and how external things impact us and how valuable having a connection with ourselves is. And, um, and then it was just like a little breadcrumb trail of curiosity I followed. And I, and, and all along I was kind of thinking, well, I, d- I don't know if this is my thing, but I seem to be doing okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. So were you actually practicing shiatsu massage? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, all my first clients were my ex colleagues. <laughs> the same kind of people that wanted you to be, you know, following in the line of the NHS. <laughs> well, my, my ex colleagues were great. Actually, it was okay. just the bosses. I didn't look after them, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was, I was, I, I realized I had an inherent ability to create calm from chaos. Mm. And people saw that in me. And, um, and so they were my first clients and I, I knew how to look after people. I know how to connect with people and they all just kept referring each other. And so I built a business around it. And, um, yeah, that's a very short version of a long story (laughs) because I've, I've done a lot more training since then, but basically I've kind of gone from Western medicine to more Eastern medicine and, um, right. Cause you also included yoga along this, this yeah, windy yeah, yeah. road. Yeah. So I think yoga came into my life, uh, actually probably just, just before I discovered Shiatsu, I'd always been quite interested in personal development and, um, you know, a bit of, a bit of self inquiry, self exploration. So I was quite open to that stuff. Um, but I, I was so used to following my head. Mm. Like so many of us are right. And, and, it takes you a while to acknowledge the the call of the heart. Yeah. Well, what do you think really cinched it for you? Because if at first you heard this voice, you know, after your friend passed and you hear this voice saying, would you feel cheated if you died tomorrow? I mean, and then yet you still went down, you know, the mm. ultrasound path and, and then you finally made it through, you know, yoga and shiatsu. But when do you think you finally learned to like trust that internal voice or that internal instinct? Great question. Um, much further down the line, actually. So the shiatsu training is three years. You know, you learn all about Chinese medicine and it takes you through a process of deep self inquiry. Mm. Part of the training is, is to emerge as a grounded person human being that can hold the space for other people you have to go through the process yourself but even at by the end of that three years I was still not kind of in that space of trust it took many many more years and um there wasn't necessary it was more of a slow evolution than a than a big realization um i trained in craniosacral therapy i I just got more and more interested in subtle arts and and arts that involved being quiet and still because i realized that's what my soul craved Mm. i didn't know i just needed stuff that that really brings you into alignment and stillness and space space holding stuff and that's and when you allow time for that you start to be able to listen to your own voice and you start to realize that it's a constant and it can be trusted and yeah, yeah, but it's, it's, it's a journey. It's a journey. It is an amazing journey. journey. 
Well, it's interesting that you say that learning to get quiet and trust, because that's one of your mottos. This peace is the missing piece, right? So we have to learn how to, you know, go on what you call a peaceful rebellion, like bringing more peace to our lives. Um, I think it's, I think it's important though that you're sharing this because for those of us who did, you know, like you follow the, the head path thinking mm-hmm. about, okay, I've got to please my parents and, you know, maybe the artistic stuff isn't going to be, you know, self sustaining. It's really good to hear that even though it was a windy path, you eventually ended up in this place of peace and confidence. But what's tricky to me is that. It, it still took you all the way till now to write a book. Like you always wanted to be a writer. You went down all of these other paths and, and weren't you also doing like therapy? You were, you were, you know, a therapist as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think, so that's the interesting thing. I, I was so good at being, being a therapist, working one-to-one. I'm actually really good at small circles, you know, teach, teaching yoga classes. I'm good at holding space, but I was so focused on my people that yeah. I was serving and I, and I was really looking after myself as well, but I'm an inherent giver. And so it took me a while uh, to recognize that what was missing was my self-expression. Mm. And I, I almost had to open up the channel between my head and my heart. You know, I had to consciously think, about things in chakra senses, energy center senses. And, and I, I, it took me a long time to open my heart up again because it was much safer not having it so open. And then it, and then my voice, you know, I was really aware as I got more tuned into my, my own energy and got more tapped into my intuitive stuff that this was almost like the last frontier. Oh, <laughs> you know? wow. I wasn't expressing myself and that translated to writing. I, I guess I'd shut it down. Uh-huh. Because, you know, in those earlier years when I wasn't following that, that thing my heart wanted to do, it was pain, it's painful, isn't it, to, yeah. to tap into something you're ignoring. So it's easier just to put it in a cupboard. <laughs> but I've also, I've always said I do things in my own Helen time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it might take me a while, but I get there eventually. <laughs> well, I love that you've kept such a beautiful attitude. And you know, you know how my thing is. I like to be grateful for what we have. And I'm actually grateful that your windy path has allowed you to have the insight about sort of the traditional path and people pleasing, because then you're able to relate to your clients better. And it sounds like bridging this Eastern and Western knowledge has really helped you with the the magical process, hasn't it? Yeah, definitely. And, um, and I also think that translates to me as a person as well, because I, I feel like I am a, I'm a bridge, you know, I provide, I kind of provide that, that conduit between people very grounded and, 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 and in the real world and helping them access these slightly more intangible Eastern, slightly esoteric practices I make them very real and and one of my favorite clients always said what I loved about you is you didn't use woo woo language which would have put me off and it's like it's like spirituality by stealth you know I kind of <laughs> sneak in the back door open up their world and then watch it's like I send them off and watch as they blossom like a flower Wow. Well, because it works, right? So if we can get past whatever blocks they may have had to woo woo language or whatnot, it's beautiful to know that the process works. Would you, would you describe to us the magical process? Yeah, it's quite involved. Um, but essentially I, so each letter stands for something different. Um, and I start off actually by getting people to motivate themselves. So I get them to look at their journey so far, make peace with their journey so far. Um, Just come to a realization that everything that's happened to them will all make sense. They don't have to understand it. It's just a process of kind of making peace with with, with where you are, where you've been and developing empathy for future you. Mm. And, um, and self-worth is a big 
aspect of that stage because without re-establishing self-worth and giving yourself permission, you you can't kind of move forward to the next stages. Um, yeah, and the, I won't take you through each stage because it's quite convoluted, but um, essentially I break it down into the book so it is more accessible. But it's, it's things like t- teaching people how to get out of their heads into their heart, teaching people how to ground, how to center, how to access peace, how, how to meditate. So that, so that there are quite tangible how to's alongside slightly more intangible things. Um, but I teach people self-awareness, you know, I teach them to recognize how physically their body feels when they're thinking a certain way. So there's a lot of enabling that happens when people start to realize how their emotions, their energy in motion ties into what they're feeling in their body. So, so a lot of it's really simple. It's things that you and I wouldn't think about, but you know, I've worked with people that don't know how to feel. Mm, Yeah, I know. Right. Because some people have become so numb uh, they've either decided to kind of tune out to some of their emotions, their feelings because it's too painful or they've used something to numb them out, whether yeah. that's food or sex or shopping or whatever. Very much so. So it's recognizing all of that. So there's a whole self-awareness, self-inquiry process I take them through. Um there's a, a lot of clearing their energy that I take them through. So I teach them practices that they can use daily. I teach them a connection practice that they can use daily so that they're accessing something greater than their physical self. So mm-hmm. I teach them about how to use their own energy. I teach them things like how to be more boundaried, how to say no and yes, you know. So it's quite mm-hmm. nuanced. There are a lot of elements to this. It's like... I want to jump in here on one of those things because the boundaries, that's a big one. It's a big Mm -hmm. one that it took me a while to learn. So, and especially because I was like you, I was a bit of a people pleaser. I would put everyone else ahead of me. And sometimes I didn't know how to say no. I didn't know how to keep those boundaries so that someone wasn't always coming back and draining me. So when we get back from the break, would you mind just sharing at least one little tip on helping us establish boundaries? Sure, love to. Perfect. Tune in daily to get fired up with insight and inspiration for purposeful living, conscious relationships, and soulful success. You're watching Liberate Your Authentic Self with me, Dr. Andrea Pennington. Check out the live version of this show where I answer your questions in real time. Visit facebook.com forward slash Dr. Andrea Pennington. So wouldn't you love it if you had kind of a light bulb moment and you suddenly awakened to your own potential and you could really change your life and live life on your own terms? Well, today's guest has had many such light bulb moments. And in fact, now her life's mission is to give people these experiences to help them reach more of their potential. So Helen, I love that you say that seeing people who live with their full expression of who they are lights you up. Mm. And also because you say, you know, life is really too short to be spent spinning in circles or feeling overwhelmed and, and stressed. And before we went to the break, we were talking about one of the things that used to stress me out. And that was always putting other people's needs first. Like in my mind, I was thinking about, did I do enough there? Was I good enough there? Did I return that call? You know, I, I was over giving. Yeah. And then as a result of that, sometimes people were overtaking because I didn't really have good boundaries. And yeah. this is something that I had to learn the hard way over time. And it's something that my clients are always asking me about. So I'd love to hear how your personal experience has evolved into your professional experience about helping uh, people re-establish healthy boundaries. Mm. Yeah, sure. So we talked a little bit about self-worth and, um, and for me, again, that's the starting point. It's, it's realizing that your needs are just as valid as other people's. And 
And once you've established that and you maybe like I do this little peeling of the onion exercise I get people to do. So they're looking at like what lies underneath that desire to be all things to all people. And I might get them to think of a particular incident so they can, you know, tangibly feel it in their bodies. And then and then you just keep asking the question. And what's so what's that about? How does that make you feel? And you just kind of keep deep diving. And, and, and usually what happens is, under, as you will know, underneath it, there is this desire to be approved of or to be loved or whatever it might be. And, and a sense that you're somehow failing if you don't fulfill all of the obligations. Yeah. And, and so once I've worked through a bit of a process around that with people, I, I like giving people really practical things they can do. And I never give anyone anything to do that I haven't done myself. Um, So really practical stuff like I get people to see if they can carve out their own space, even Mm. if they have a tiny, tiny space that they live in, like make a corner your own and make it almost your sacred non-negotiable space Mm. that you will commit to doing or visiting, you know, five minutes a day or whatever it might be. It's like little small steps, little small gestures. Do things like I have, um, I have an autoresponder on my email. I've had it for years and I'm really, really boundaried around my online time. It's slipped a bit at the moment because of all the stuff happening around the book, but people, people appreciate really tangible things like that. You know, um, just, just, I, I train people to not expect me to respond out of hours, to not expect me to respond to text messages because you're, you know, you're right. The more you give, the more people will expect you to give, Mm. not because they're mean, just because they see you as a giving person, but then you end up with nothing left for yourself. And, and then you can't be, you can't be anything for anybody because you've got to sort out yourself first, as you know. So, so yeah, it's stuff. It's just practical, practical stuff. Think yeah, little things. It's practical, and and it might seem simple to you now, or me, or both of us now. But I think for people who are used to always saying yes and always feeling like they have to respond right away, um, I love the idea of training. <laughs> You're training yeah. people. It's retraining, right? Because every yeah. time someone calls and says, "Oh, can you do me this favor?" and we always say yes. We, if we keep saying yes, we we are training them yeah, yeah. to count on us. So now totally. we have to go through a process of training people. And I love your autoresponder. Um, you know, I do it when I go on vacation, but I love that you have it there all the time. And there's another therapist that I noticed. I sent her an email and I was like, oh, I now, I'm now being told that I might get a response within 24 <laughs> hours. I'm like, okay. And it's so brilliant because we're setting expectations. We're saying, yeah. look, my time is valuable. And you are valuable to me. And if I want to respond to you with the best me possible, then these are the parameters. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And people love it. It's really well received. I've had so many beautiful messages from people who've just said, oh, my goodness, I love your autoresponder. Can I use it? Yes, you can. Be my guest. Totally. So tell me a little bit about the book and and how and why it finally... uh, I'm not trying to get on you. Everything <laughs> happens in divine timing. I know when we're ready, but, but I know that you are a writer and you've had this in you for a while. And I also know that things come at the perfect time. Like you've blended in your personal experience and your professional work, like things in the book that you've actually done with your clients. Mm, but yeah. why now? Why 2017? So, um, what happened was, my sister-in-law sadly died. It seems I need people to die to wake me up again. But like, I'm pretty awake, but I start to slowly fall asleep a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm having a nice time. Everything's lovely. I've got my practices sorted out. All is good. But, yeah, she died. And, um, you know, you just think, mm, oh, yeah, that little reminder – Life is short. I have an appreciation of that. I've worked in the NHS. I've seen a lot of people pass through life. And and mostly I'm grateful for that awareness, but I forget. But when she died, I saw 
how much impact one person that actually has spent their entire life struggling with disease and and she she had very bad scoliosis uh so she spent her life having operations all kinds of things and um and she was passionate about helping get scoliosis treatment changed and i won't go into all the details because i i won't do them justice and i don't know them all but what i know is that she managed to get a treatment established in the uk via a usa doctor that has subsequently changed thousands of children's lives wow and um and that happened very close to her death so just while she was in the throes of her disease um and i just she still she still died with things unexpressed and unsaid yeah she had dreams that she didn't get to achieve but i saw the power of one person to actually impact lots of lives and and i had this not just her going it's like this stronger inner voice came through mm this real sense of you have to take your message out there and it might not make sense, but you have to do it. And I, and I had to follow it. So that was a couple of years ago. It's taken me a while to assimilate my stuff and, and try and sift through it and, and work out, you know, like how, how am I best writing about this stuff? Mm -hmm. And actually my, I started getting back into my writing and reawakening my writer's voice by blogging initially um and then morning pages journaling and my meditation practice became much stronger and then I just started channeling stuff and this book has written itself I did not oh yeah I didn't have a magical process until I wrote the book I had all the processes but they weren't formulated into a structure it happened as I wrote it that's beautiful so it is magical yeah. So the magical unfolding will be, um, well, the, the first thing is you're doing this major publishizer event. So in other words, you're crowdfunding with this, um, platform that you, you're the first person who's ever told me about this crowdfunding oh. platform called publishizer, which is meant to help, um, authors or would be authors get their work kind of pre-sold so that then publishers will either take you more seriously or if you decide to self-publish, you've already got an audience waiting and you yeah. know that you're going to be able to sell. So tell me a little bit about the campaign. Yeah, so the campaign actually goes live. It will probably be live by the time people get to see this. It starts on the 15th of September and it runs for a month. And um the platform, I was approached by the platform because they liked my proposal and they um, they saw something in it and they just invited me to have a go. And I, I of course, said yes. Uh, <laughs> and and basically what you do is you, you create these exclusive bonus packages so that anybody who shows faith in what you have to offer and does you the honor of trusting in your your vision your dream what you can promise they they get rewarded if they pre-order on this platform with any number of bonuses that that i've put together and for different people they'll work in different ways and um and then it's just a question of me getting it out there and uh for the for the that month spreading the word and getting over myself and asking for support and um, and just just trusting that I will have, you know, the minimum amount of orders I need for a, for a publisher to take me seriously. And yeah, if I don't, I will self publish. Um, but really, it's not about it's not about being published. It's not about that kudos. It's about having having access to more visibility. Yeah, and just you know, just getting people more interested. And I kind of feel like this. I almost need to, needed to give myself this momentum. Yeah. Yeah. So that I would put it out there and not just sit on it. Well, <laughs> deadlines and campaigns are great that way. It's like uh, it gives us that motivation to finally mm. like use the pressure to get past our own blocks or our own inertia. Yeah. Well, Helen, you know that I when you sent me my sneak peek at the proposal, 
I loved it. And so you've got one publisher right here who would love to publish your book and bring it to the world. But you know, I will support you no matter which publisher you go with. So I love this. So the Publishizer platform, then you will offer people perks for pre-ordering mm-hmm. the book. And the more they order, the more bonuses and perks and goodies they get. Yeah. I love it. Yes. So you're basically yeah. pre-selling. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Love it. And then, okay. So it's, it's out now, ladies and gentlemen, you can visit, visit publishizer.com forward slash the hyphen magical hyphen unfolding. Yes. Um, all the links will be in the description. You can also visit Helen's website, the tranquil path, right? Mm-hmm. Dot co dot uk. Yeah. Cause there is a dot com. That's a whole other thing. It's a whole other thing. Yes. I made that mistake before the tranquil path <laughs> dot co dot uk. Dot- Um, All of the links will be in the description, of course. So I love this. So what I also hear about how your life journey, right? So you had this desire to to be a writer, but you felt like, oh, I need to get a regular degree and and this will make my family proud. Been there, done that. I know so many people who have. And then leading through all of your various trainings and then working as a therapist, it's really enriched your life and your ability to bring all of that and synthesize it into what you call the magical process Mm -hmm. so that people can actually have their own awakenings and their ah ahas, hopefully faster than you and I took. Right. (laughs) Um, so if you, you know, we, we ask this question a lot, but if you were able to kind of say something to your younger self, if you could travel back in time and say something to her, what would it be? It would be to trust that it all works out. Mm. That's my, that is one of the biggest learnings I've had. A, when you lean into trust and don't push, you come from a much more grounded and stable place and you're not burning yourself out, reaching forwards all the time. You know, if you learn to lean back and trust, you're, you're sort of accessing this greater flowing energy. Um, and, and just that, all the answers you need, they really are inside you. I really believe that. You know, I, I say, as you know, I say, you are the panacea you seek. Like master yourself and you will master your world. And I really believe that. I, I, I just had to learn to access the thing that we actually all have. We all come here with, but yeah. we, we get humanized. Exactly. <laughs> You know, we we forget we're actually we're quite magical, unique, wondrous beings. And um, yeah, I'm here to remind people whether they realize it or not. So here's another question then. If if you could go back in time and you did say that to your younger self mm. and you said, hey, lean in to trust, trust that everything is going to work out. What if your younger self said, really, everything's going to work out? Well, then. I'm just going to go to school and and study literature or English or writing or whatever. Like, would you, as your adult self now, would you change anything about the past? No. Yeah. Cause I, uh, yeah, I think that you like love the magic that your life is now, even though there were all these bumps along the way. Yeah. I don't, I wouldn't have the appreciation I have for life for every day that I wake up. You know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't appreciate the joys in the small things that I have if I hadn't. And I went through some very dark times. I wouldn't have the appreciation of the other emotion. If everything had just been steady and, you know, predictable and I'd gone down that path and I wouldn't change a thing. No way. Wow. (laughs) Well, when we get back, uh, I don't want to dwell in the negative, but I do think that there is power in sharing our struggles because someone would look at you today and you're beautiful and you're smiling and you're radiant. And if we look at you on social media, you put out these beautiful posts. I just participated in your Zen in 10 challenge. So if I look at you now, I'm thinking, oh, she's got it totally put together. Mm -hmm. She's so relaxed and cool. She, you know, she's just got it. So I think there's value in sharing some of the bumps and roadblocks along the way. So when we get back from the break, would you mind sharing just a little bit? No, not at all. All right. Fabulous. 
You're watching Liberate Your Authentic Self with me, Dr. Andrea Pennington. Check me out on Instagram at Dr. Andrea Pennington. And now back to the show. So we all go through the trials and tribulations of human life, right? But if you could change some of the pain and the roadblocks you've experienced, would you? Well, today's guest says she actually wouldn't. And even when I look at my life and the years of depression that I endured, I wouldn't change it either because I know what I know today is really allowing me to put the best of me forward. So Helen, I do want to know a little bit more about some of the roadblocks and frustrations and the setbacks that you actually experienced along your journey, um, you know, before you got to living in the magical way that you live today. Okay, I'm a, I'm aware of the time, so I will try and be succinct <laughs> because we could talk about this for hours, I'm sure. Um, but basically, I le I left home at 18. I was a very messed up teenager, very self destructive. I couldn't relate to my family. I love them dearly, um, but at the time, I didn't. I I kind of felt like an alien almost on the edge of this family that just didn't get me. I was just different. Yeah. You know, I felt everything acutely and I, you know, I was kind of brought into a family that didn't really express. There were things left unsaid, but I could feel them and sense them. And and it was a very confusing way to live. And so even as early as 16, I was very self-destructive. I was doing stuff like cutting my arms and, you know, getting drunk all the time and just doing things that people that love themselves don't do. And, mm. um, I left home at 18. I went to live in a squat with this boy because he was showing me love, all the love I was craving. Uh, he turned out to be very violent and aggressive. Oh and, um, I actually had to escape. I had to engineer it so I could get away with him. Cause he was, he used to follow me around, stalk me, all sorts of things. <laughs> so really controlling. Wow. So I learned a lot about how to not have any money, how to deal with violence, how to, that's actually one of the places I think I learned to stay calm in the face of aggression. And I learned how powerful not reacting was. And, um, yeah, and so I forged my way. I forged, uh, I forged my way. And I guess that gave me a lot of strength. But, um, once I'd split up from him, I got very bad depression to the point where I couldn't, I couldn't function very well. I couldn't leave the house. So I actually went to do nurse training oh. for a year and a half. Okay. <laughs> so I've had many careers. Um, but I, I, again, it wasn't right. So I was like 18, 19 at this point, got really depressed and uh, again, went through a self-destructive spiral of doing drugs and all sorts of things. Like a lot of people go through this, I'm finding. Yeah. Um, been there, done that. Yeah. And, and then, then my friend, as I said, my friend died. I had the whole voice and, um, I guess life, life got more stable and sorted when I was 30 and I met my husband and, uh, he broke through the very thick walls I'd built around myself by then and made me realize that maybe I did have something to offer. But even then I went through another spiral of, of anxiety, depression, and got really agoraphobic, couldn't leave the house. Um, hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, just, just so many things. And really the, I think the biggest thing that I've gone through with him, my time with him has been coming to terms with the fact that we, couldn't have children. I couldn't sustain pregnancy. Hmm. And I had a lot of, um, just a lot of operations, even had a, had an acute reaction to anesthesia and, um, had, I've had an anaphylactic reaction. So I've had sort of like very close death experiences a couple of times as wow. well. And, you know, so it's just been, it's been a, a tricky path in many ways. I've broken many, many times. Mm. I've hurt myself many, many times. And I, and I know how, how it affects you. And I know how to forge a different path 
Mm. And, and I and the thing is, I see I see these patterns in so many women, even though they might not manifest in the same way. Yeah, I see, and I know you see this too. And it's it, it pains me. It's yeah. it's like. I need to empower you. Yeah, because you remember how it actually feels. It's not just feeling pity or saying, oh, wow, I see this person who's going down a destructive path or they're, you know, just not self-expressed. But it's like, I, I'm assuming it might be the same for me as for me. But for me, when I remember back, it's like I can see their pain, but then I remember, oh, I know how that feels. Mm. I know how it feels to just want to pull the covers up and not answer the phone, not answer the door and just be completely walled off. Like yeah. people can imagine that. They're like, oh, well, you're laying in the bed. It's like, no, but do you know the experience on the inside when you really like totally withdraw? So when I see people that are in that, I'm like, no, I promise you there's life on the outside yes. and you don't have yeah. to go out all the time. Cause I am, I'm still an introvert. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> you know, but there is this life that we can have. So I know what you mean by like really feeling pained when you see yeah. other people. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's so hard to pull yourself out of that deep, dark pit. It can it's be so hard. So what but, would you what would you advise someone who is currently, you know, really feeling stuck? Maybe they don't even know where to start. What what advice would you give? The first thing has to be to acknowledge that that's where you are. And and I I think you it's when you when when you, you can express that to yourself, then you're able to express it to one other person maybe mm. so I, I, that's the first thing I think because we we can get so into our own heads and into our own stuck space that you almost need to forge a connection outwards to another human being yeah. as your very you know that's the very first starting point it's like admitting that things are not as they should be and that you're struggling and so it's finding a person you can trust and learning how to express. That's got to be the starting point, really, because, you know, once you once you it's like you open up, then you open up your your energy, you open up your your capacity to receive whatever it is you might need. And then hopefully you will that person will either be able to support you or they'll be able to direct you somewhere that might be useful or something will come your way that is exactly what you need, whether it's a book or a film or a song or a therapist or a coach, whatever, you know, whatever it might be, but you need to be able to look outward first and reach out. Mm. Would you agree? Yeah, I do. I, because I know both you and I are very introspective. So meditation mm -hmm. and self-reflection, self-discovery is a part of it. But I definitely feel like the times in my life when it was really dark and bleak by at least having one person that I could feel confident enough to say, Hey, my thoughts are really going into the dark zone here. Yeah. And yeah. not, I wasn't necessarily asking for help. It was just that acknowledgement of, Oh my God, I'm really at a low here. And that, it's like you exactly as you said, I felt this opening. I felt this yeah. sense of, okay, I've just said the worst. I've just admitted it. And, and I think it's also by being willing to say it, it's almost like you're saying yes to life. Like yeah. I'm still yeah. holding on to the hope that there yeah. could be um, a way out of this anxiety or yeah. a way out of this depression. Absolutely. It's like it opens up possibility, doesn't it? And it's sending out a little sliver of hope and, and uh, you know, it's reaching out for an anchor of some sort. And then the only way is up after that. Yeah, that is kind of the, the good part about hitting rock bottom totally, yeah. is that the only, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, I know the worst. So yeah, there's only one way. Well, after we've reached out and, and certainly you can reach out to Helen on social media, just like you can tap into me on Facebook groups and Facebook lives. But I know that you've also got a gift for our audience, including this beautiful inspirational ebook, along with a guided audio meditation. 
I think that's awesome. So for people who um, are hopefully going to go and pre-order your book before October 15th, we'll give some more information about that. But something that they can get a hold of right away is, is this, um, this gift that you have. So tell me more about that. Yeah. So it's this, it's almost like the precursor to the magical unfolding book. Actually, I, it's this very beautiful, divinely gifted, um, Mm. little ebook I created, which gave me some of the framework for the magical unfolding. So it just introduces people to the concepts that I cover in the book. And, um, even though it precedes the book and it will help remind them of, who they are, what they're about, what, what richness there is to be had in this life. Mm. And, um, you know, and just what things will serve them best and what won't. So, um, so yeah, it's lovely. People love it. It's kind of nourishment for your soul. And then the audio will help them tap into their heart, get out of their head and tap into their heart so that they can stop getting better at just being still listening, listening to the voice within in whatever form that presents itself. Mm-hmm. So, so download that. You can visit the tranquilpath.co.uk forward slash soul home. I love that. I love that you've, you've got something that we can get started with right away. But of course, remember that the links are in the description here and you can visit publishizer.com forward slash the hyphen magical hyphen unfolding so that you can pre-order Helen's book, The Magical Unfolding, which is going through this magical process, which each letter actually stands for something that's going to help you in your own self-awareness, self-discovery path, and really ultimately helping you lead a magical life. Yeah. Mm, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And a magical life is full of peace and purpose and possibility and potential. Yes. So it's all the P's (laughs) and all the M's. We've got meditation, mindfulness, mindset, movement, and it can lead to all the P's. All right. So I love it. I love it. Well, what, what else would you like to share with the audience before we wrap up our conversation today? Oh, so what would I like to share with the audience? I love this question. I'd, <laughs> I'd like to go back to what I said I would tell my younger self. Mm. You know, I, I would I would like to remind people peace is the missing piece. You know, you can't you can't exist in a never ending cycle of reaching forwards and being burnt out and being all things to other people. And, um, so remember to find pockets of peace, even if it's only a moment here and there. And remember, remember to trust that it will all work out and you have everything you need inside you. And if you get quiet, if you learn how to get quiet, you'll be able to access your own guidance and you won't need to listen to external shoulds and external voices. Mm, beautiful, wonderful, wise words to leave us with. You know what? There's one question that I forgot to ask you, though. So remember when you said you went and got the you went down the ultrasound path because you thought, oh, if I get this, this biology degree and, and do that, it's going to please my parents. Now that you've made all these other shifts and turns, how did your family react? <laughs> Do you know the ironic thing? So my my family, my mum and dad, are now both writers. Oh, my gosh. Hilarious. <laughs> so they've, I know. My dad was an accountant. He's retired. They both write. My mum edits. It's always been in my family. And um, my mum is, well, they're both real champions, actually. But my mum particularly, she's, she's in my Zen in 10 group. And... Um, she says my stuff has helped her. It's helped her self-actualize and become more of who she came here to be. Wow. So they're, they're, they're fully on board. So, you know, this myth I was telling myself about what they thought was right, maybe they did at the time, but they didn't know any different. And now, now they do. 
Wonderful. So it's all good. So it's all good. You still have family connections intact. You know, obviously, we, we talk about your last name, Ribello, and, you know, going down the rebellion path for sometimes, for some people, it's scary because they think, oh, but if I, if I break away from what my family wants, then I'm not going to have family anymore. Mm. Like the cost of being a rebel is sometimes too great for people. So yeah. It's, it's good to know. And it's the same for me. For those of you who've heard me talk about my dad's influence and all of that, my dad still loves me. You know, we're still connected, even though I followed my heart and I'm living my truth. So, well, thank you. I'm glad that we got to close that mm. loop on that part of your story. Yeah, me too. Well, Helen, it is always a pleasure to connect with you. I'm so excited for this book crowdfunding campaign, and we will be sending people to publishizer.com to look for the new book by Helen Ribello called The Magical Unfolding. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been beautiful. Yes, it's wonderful to connect. So my dear friends, remember that you are a gift to the world. So share your presence with passion. Much love. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Dr. Andrea. And did you know I'm on the radio daily? Visit AmericaOutloud.com to download the talk radio app.